Hello! This is going to be my tutorial for box cutter, and it is currently June of 2019. That's just a heads up, because if it's much later than this, then it might be updated, and there's probably a few new changes going on, so this might not be current. Quick insert here, I just wanted to break the fourth wall and tell you it is really important to have the latest experimental version of Blender and the latest version of box cutter because I didn't have that the first time I started doing it and I was getting lots of errors and it was really frustrating. So yeah, just a heads up, make sure you have that. So let's just start with the basics here. To make a cut, you select an object, go into this box cutter mode here, and you can drag, and then once you release the mouse button, you can drag once more and that will give you the depth of the cut. You can click to execute that, and here you have your first cut. So at this point I'd like to tell you real quick about this little tab over here that says tool. If you go to help here it will show you hotkeys for box cutter which is really handy because when I first started using it I knew there were a lot of hotkeys but I wasn't sure what they were and this will actually tell you topically I think that's the word to use. So if I start dragging all these hotkeys will change here and it displays everything there that you need so that's pretty handy uh, another thing is if you click D it'll pop up this pie menu and here you can get different shapes to use so that's pretty handy another good thing to be aware of is down here where it says box cutter on the end panel there's a bunch more options for box cutter it's basically similar to the D pie menu so let's get into the different shapes that you can use. If you hit D once more, you can see it says circle here, and that will allow you to make circular cuts, which are really handy if you're doing rivets and stuff. So you can drag that out and select the depth, and you've got this circular cut. It's really nice. Another great feature is you can use an end gone to cut. So basically, you can draw and draw the shape that you want to cut out of the thing. So just like this, to lock this shape in, you right click, and then you can change your view and everything. And then if you click once more, that helps drag the depth. So you can do that sort of thing. And you can get some really sweet shapes like this. So there's also different types of cuts that you can do. And if you go to the tool here, and I'm just gonna switch back to box and save real quick because that's always a good idea. But if you drag out a new cut, you can actually hit tab real quick and that will just lock the shape so that you don't have to be dragging it around all the time. As you can see over here, there's different options for different cuts. So you can do slice, you can do inset, you can do join. So I'll show you those real quick. For inset, if you click Z, it will make an inset cut there. And if you want to lock that in, you just hit enter and you have this cut here. So that's pretty cool. And then another one that I really like is Slice. So I'm going to real quick use Hard Ops here to get a nice bevel going. So you can actually see the effect of the Slice. But once you get this in, you can do a, no a normal cut and then hit X and that will actually slice the mesh. And this is a really nice feature to have because if you know before, if you were just using bool tool, you'd have to duplicate the object and switch the operation, and it was basically a big hassle to get this simple feature, which looks really nice, but I've actually avoided doing that type of operation for a long time since it was so hard to do. But now it's a lot easier and a lot more effective, and it's so nice. <laughs> so some more things you can do with cutting. You can bevel, which is really nice if you click B. The position of your mouse shows how much bevel you want, and once again you can hit tab to lock that and just look around and see if that's actually what you want. And also, while you have that, if you want to click Q, that will help the uh, depth portion to be rounded off. As you can see here, you can toggle it with Q. And also you can toggle the bevel with B, I think. Nope. Yeah. Alright, so that's beveling in a nutshell. Then there are a couple other things I want to show you real quick. One is mirroring, which can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but 
If you make a cut like this, lock it off with tab, you can see here, one, two, three, uh, um, the keys one, two, three act as the X, Y, and Z mirrors. So if you do like two, for an example, it mirrors it on the Y axis, which can be really handy. Once again, you can go and bevel it and make it nice looking, and then it's doing it on the other side, so that's really nice. And one more thing for special cuts is the array. If you want to make an array, then you hit V, and it's a little bit fiddly, like mirroring, but if you do X, Y, or Z, that changes the axis that you're um, arraying along. So, yeah, that's pretty sweet. You can use the scroll wheel to change the array count if you want, so that's pretty handy as well. Yeah, so there's that nice cut. So that is about it. That's most of what I've learned so far. Honestly, this is all I need to get by and make some really nice shapes. In the future, I'll probably be digging a bit deeper into the features of Box Cutter, so I'll make sure and share with you what I find out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this. Cheers!